crack. Welcome to today's episode. My name is David Kelly. I'm the Irish Guy Vlogs. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you'll notice, there's some cages here in the background because I'm up in North Clare today. I'm here in the burn at the Bird of Prey Sanctuary and it's really, really cool. There's so many cool birds around. Now, the show is going to start soon. We're going to go in and we're going to get to see some of the birds flying around. It's going to be cool. It's going to be exciting. I'm just going to give you a look around at some of the birds. And then later on in the episode, I'm going to go and do a tour of the caves, which is just up the road. So yeah, thanks for joining me today. Let's just jump into this episode and uh, see what the Bird of Prey Sanctuary is all about. So I was here once years ago, back in 2008, 2009, some, sometime around there. No, there wasn't as many birds here then. The place didn't really. It, it still looked nice and stuff, but uh, it's just nicer now. There's, it's more populated, there's a lot more here. Inside in his little home, he's so cool. Hello. Oh my god, that's so cool. Look at this badass. How are you, Vladimir? He is so cool. It's a steppe eagle, Aquila na Aquila Napalensis. Uh, Aquila Nipalensis. Very, very cool. Vladimir, you are awesome. I wish I had some food. I've no I wish I had a ham sandwich or something to give you, Vladimir, but I don't. Sorry, bye. Look at those talons, they would rip you apart. Oh my god. They would do serious damage. Clodagh, one of the girls inside, was saying that the barn owl it's, even though its talons are tiny, they have enough strength in one of their feet than we have in one of our hands. Like, it's like crazy. So that it's like equivalent of like a Doberman biting you, like you know, like the damage it would do. It's just uh, 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 mental. <gasps> oh my God! Well, how are you keeping? Just having an old nap. Sorry to bother you. Look at him inside, and he's just chilling. Look, look how calm he's just. Yeah, just pure chilled, just sleeping on a branch, that's all I'm doing. Just sleeping, standing up on a tree. What's wrong with that? They are so cool. What are things? Huh? Keep them well. This is Sika. He's an absolute badass. Look at him. Or is it a her? Is it a him or a her? Whoa, what? 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 Get that out, you want. This bird just said hello. I, I, I thought it was only minor birds. Parrots. Ah, my lily. Hello. That is crazy. <laughs> what? Yeah, he mimics all sorts of sounds. Hello. Hello. He's not going to talk to me. So I'm going to go and talk to one of the workers here. Uh, she's been off doing a trip recently. Uh, she just taught me about it and I thought it would be cool to get it on camera. So, uh, yeah, this is Cloda. My name is Cloda. I work here at the Bird of Prey Centre for about four years, I suppose, at this stage. Um, and I'm just back from six weeks working with one of our conservation projects, which we support abroad, which is in Nepal. Um, and that's focused around red-headed vultures. Uh, red-headed are a critically endangered species. So um, I was monitoring and surveying um, and tracking and looking for nests and that kind of thing of... Uh, of the species, they're declining and they're not sure why, so research is really important for, for that kind of thing. Vultures in Southeast Asia declined by 98% in just 20 years, um, and that was because of a veterinary drug that used to be used out there um, called diclofenac. It's like in Diphene and Volterol, okay. and it was used on cattle um, and out in those 
parts of the world, what they do is leave the carcasses out for the vultures to eat, and it stops the vultures' kidneys from working. So Dekla Fenov killed pretty much every, for every thousand vultures there was, there's only one left. The drug was banned in 2005 or 2006 in, uh, in Nepal, but it's still, free, it's still in use in India, so they get a lot of it in the black market. Um, so we've done lots of different things since 2008, since the centre opened. We always support vulture conservation yeah. every year. Um, so we had a campaign to buy up residual stocks in Nepal to get it off okay. the black market. Just to get it, just to just get get it off the market. Um, so that's not as much of an issue anymore except yeah. just along the border way sometimes the vets kind of bring it in by getting the visitors in raising awareness is obviously really important education is really important for conservation issues here you know and the display I was talking about um, barren owl conservation and um, that's really important raising awareness but then that's also supporting the funding for other projects that we that we support. If you just Google nest box plans for barn owl, there'll be lots of different ones come up, like how to build a nest box and where to put it, tips to where to put it. They normally live in um, old buildings, build, buildings that would be inhabited, and because we're now knocking down those buildings and repurposing them um, a lot in kind of our modern day, but yeah. there's not as many of those places left, so nest boxes are really good. Really. This looks so good. Oh my god. So this is our own honey. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Okay. Uh, first of all, we, we the reason we have our own honey is because we're um, breeding native Irish honeybees. So we uh, have an arrangement with Greg Byrne, who is a conservationist in Wicklow. So he comes here to the barn to do it because breeding native queens, he needs to have minimum amount of uh, drones. So he just asked me if I'd like to taste it, and I'm like, yes, without a doubt. <coughs> I'm going to use the other end of that stick. That's so smooth. Really, really nice. Different. You can really, really yeah. taste it. Yeah. Reminds me of when I was younger. That's when I, when yeah. I was in the fields and yeah. kind of get that smell of the air. Yeah, I'm getting free lunch. He's offered me cheese and all so I never got your name actually. Dave is my name. Dave, I'm David as well. All right, nice okay. to meet you. <laughs> I don't know anything about your cheese in particular, but I know that I love cheese. <laughs> what, I, what I do first is maybe start you off on the plane here. So this is six months old. It will give you an idea of, of where it's getting. Okay. To, okay? <laughs> Sustainability is, is what we're about. Not only locally sourced, but lo like made by a local farmer. He milks the cows in the morning up at Cat Connell, brings the milk down, pumps it into our bull tank, it's pasteurized, add in a live culture, and we add in a rennet to set it like a jelly, drop in the knives to cut the curd. Once we get to within the month, you can call it a year old. It's quite hard. I'm, I'm putting a lot of pressure on this now to get this cut. Garlic and metal. So I came on the right day then. I got look I got lots of free cheese as well, which is so really, really nice. Okay, okay. Yeah. I don't think you don't want to contaminate the place. So, no, you're okay <laughs> because everything is sealed in, in its wax. So we try to keep it between nine and ten. Yeah, well we try to age it up in the cave. It's very difficult because it the mold will go out of control. Yeah, the yeah. humidity is too high, 90% plus. No, where's the control? No. Oh, that was awesome. It's raining now. That guy inside, Dave, was really, really nice. He taught me a lot about cheese and honey and stuff. And it's just, I just wasn't expecting that. Like for him to bring me in around the cheese place and show me and talk to me and be so nice. And he said he just wants to give me the same experience as everyone else. And I can tell that he's genuine because he's really, really passionate about cheese. Like he was getting really excited about just like showing me different types of cheeses. What a nice guy and what a nice experience that was. I can still taste the cheese now. Now the weather is taking a little bit of a turn here uh, at the minute, but I mean, it's not clear. You're never really too far from rain in, uh, in Clare. But uh, we're just about to go into the tour now and uh, yeah, it should be good. So let's go. Thanks. tour we have absolutely zero natural light coming into this part of the cave would you briefly like to experience the cave in its natural state for a few moments darkness yeah. 
Now, I'm aware we have a lot of young children and parents are worried about that, I won't do it. Are you, are you happy enough with that? Yeah. Now guys, if I can get you to turn off any lights or pilot lights... On I've been stuck here for three days. Oh no, here's the gift shop. Yeah, we're fine. I found my long lost son. Oh. <laughs> Sitting back to the car, the tour was really, really cool. But it's still raining and uh, yeah, gonna head home now. I hope you enjoyed the day tagging along with me. Bird of Prey Sanctuary I thought was really, really cool. The caves are awesome as well. So once again, I forgot to do an outro for my video. Because of the rain, I just jumped into the car and I went off. And I want to thank Shannon at the team at the Bird of Prey Sanctuary for letting me in for the day, letting me film. And I had a really good experience. And if you're in North Clare at any time of the year, you should definitely pop into the Bird of Prey Sanctuary and the Yellowy Caves and the farmhouse and check it all out because it's really, really cool and it's a nice little gem in the middle of the burn. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video. New videos every Friday, I'll be back again next Friday with another one and I'll see you all then. Bye.